everyone and welcome back to Don't Open That Door. I am Justin, otherwise known as Justin the Hairless. Get it? Get it? Ah, uh, oh, come on. No, no I, I get it. it. Come on, I get it. come on. Come on. Pretty it. good, pretty good. I'm pretty Nico good. and I'm Segoy Nico. Wow. 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 And y'all gave me the stone face for my shit. Fuck you, Nico. Well, I'm Dan, the man in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> And we are here today to review Kawaiden. So this was directed by Masaki Kobayashi, starring Rentaro Mikuni as the samurai from the first tale. Michio Aratama as the first wife from the first tale as well. Keiko Kishi as Yuki from the Yuki Ona story. Katsuo Nakamura as the titular Hoichi. And last but not least, Osamu Takizawa as the author from the last story in A Cup of Tea. So, Kawaiidan is an anthology that is basically broken down into four separate stories. Our first story, Kurokami, translated as the Black Hair, begins with a samurai who lives with his wife. Unfortunately, the couple live in poverty as the man's lord has basically fallen into ruin and he wants more out of life. Fair play. So, he leaves his, like, super devoted wife for a new one who's from a very important family and he takes a position of importance under a new lord. As time goes on, though, he kind of begins to regret his decision to leave his old wife. I mean, his new wife is, like, really cold to him. She even, like, smacks him up a couple times. And after, you know, serving time at his new post, he ends up running back to his old wife. He finds her, and they enjoy a night together. But unfortunately, when he wakes up the next morning, he finds that his wife is actually not there. She's just a corpse. He tries to leave the house, but he keeps aging, getting older and older and older. And after finally escaping... He is attacked by his wife's black hair. The end of that story. But Dan, I want you to tell me about the second story. I feel like it's a little more sensual. I guess. Second story is called Yukiona, which is translated as the woman of the snow. Mm -hmm. And it opens with a log cutter named Minokichi, who has been caught in a brutal blizzard along with an older logger. Yes. The pair find a cabin where they hunker down, but the old man is killed by a Yukiona, a spirit. Mm. She takes pity on Minokichi and says that she will spare him so long as he never speaks of the incident to anyone. And he agrees. So the next day, Minokichi is rescued, and after recovering, he goes back to cutting trees. One day, he meets a beautiful woman named Yuki traveling on the road to Edo. He invites her to stay the night with him, but, you know, one thing leads to another, and the two end up getting married and have a few <laughs> children. <laughs> In one day. <laughs> nah. One day before New Year's, Minokichi stitches sandals for Yuki, and in the candlelight, he notices that she looks oddly like the Yukiona from all those years ago. He relates the story to her, and a blizzard rocks the cabin. Mm. Yuki reveals herself to be the Yukiona, but says that she will spare him for the sake of their children. She leaves, and Minokichi is heartbroken. He puts her sandals outside, and they're taken by the blizzard. Well... A little, little heartbreak, I guess, in that second story. Nico, how's our third tale go with Hoichi the Airless? Feels bad, man, but uh, we'll see. Our third tale, then, Hoichi the Airless, tells the story of, predictably, Hoichi, who is a young man and is blind, but very much has his ears at this point. And he's very skilled at playing the biwa. It's like a Japanese string instrument, kind of similar to like a, a koto, if you will. Not a Koto. I'm thinking of Samusen, 100% Samusen, not a Koto. Anyway, Hoichi lives in a temple and is not a monk. And one night, he's visited by a spirit of the Taira clan that was defeated by the Minamoto clan years ago. Not knowing that he's speaking to a ghost, because, you know, he's blind, Hoichi heads out with a spirit to his spirit's lord, and he recites the tale of the Heiki which details the downfall of the Tyra clan. And I believe we also get a sort of like a recitation of that starting off this particular yeah. film, don't we? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's cool to just see again. He does this a couple nights in a row, staying out all night, which arouses the suspicions of the temple attendants. So one rainy night, at the orders of the temple priest, the attendants head out to find Hoichi playing and singing in a graveyard of all places. Realizing that he's been bewitched, 
They take him back to the temple, kicking and screaming. He is like, no, you can't possibly take me away from this royal audience. I, you know, like, they'll have your heads for this, and etc. The temple priest explains the situation to Hoichi, though, and he orders one of his acolytes to cover Hoichi with the Heart Sutra, which mm. will render him invisible to the spirits. Now, the spirit returns, the same one from before, but... He can't see Hoichi because of the Heart Sutra tattooed all over his body. Except for one place? Mm. Unfortunately, the Acolyte forgot to cover Hoichi's ears. And Damn. so the spirit rips them off and takes them back as a sign of like, well, I did my job at least. And despite this... <laughs> The story ends with Hoichi becoming a famous world-renowned, or I guess kingdom-renowned, area-renowned musician who is known throughout the lands through his melodious biwa playing. Mm. Well, we can't end on that note. Dan, why don't you go ahead and uh, lace us with that final story? Well, and this final story is called In a Cup of Tea, Mm. And it deals with an author writing a book in time for his publisher's deadline. Don't we all know about that? Hell yeah, we do. He tells the story of a samurai named Sekinai who is traveling with his old lord and his retinue. While stopping to rest, Sekinai finds his drink does not show his reflection, but rather that of a younger man. He is somewhat disturbed by this, but, you know, he still drinks in his cup. Man's just thirsty. <laughs> Later that night, Sekinai is confronted by that same man who he attacks, but seemingly does no damage to. The following night, Sekinai is attacked by three men who claim to be servants of the young man he attacked the night before. Sekinai duels them, but the story never ends, as it is revealed that the author <laughs> prefers to leave the ending to the reader's imagination. Go fuck yourself. The author's publisher then shows up, but the author is nowhere to be seen. Then, much to his horror, the publisher finds the author inside a large jar of water. <gasps> Bruh. <laughs> what a random ending that is. So why don't we go ahead and break it down? How does this movie look and sound? And Nico, I know we saw a part of this movie together. So why don't you lead? Because I know you have something very important to say about how this movie looks. I don't know about very important, but sure. This is something that it looks like it was just the way it's framed in each story, the way the scenes are shot it looks like it could almost have been a play like a stage mm. play something that you could see in a theater per like the blocking of the, the characters and just how they were framed in any particular sort of setting it really had a sort of air of grandiosity that elevated a lot of the scenes even if they were a little bit more say pedestrian or something like even the first story we have where it's largely taking place in just maybe like two rooms and the outdoors like it still felt like there was a sense of gravitas just from how it looked one thing that i particularly liked is they had these really cool painted backgrounds and because they were using those backgrounds instead it allowed them to do some really cool things like you could have like a really illustrative sunset you could have, in the story of the Yuki Ona, there was, like, eyes and stuff in the background. Looked fucking cool, man. I think those in particular look better than, you know, even, like, some kind of shitty effects from old movies where they maybe use some type of, you know, they tried to do some kind of, like, fake shit. Like, in this one, like, yes, it's very clear it's a painting, but it still looks dope. So, I it's liked it. It's pretty surreal, and it fits with the... Yeah. Sort of like thematic content of it all. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Dan, what you got to say about the looks? I mean, I was pretty much going to say the same thing. I mean, I think that the stage, if you will, looks yeah. kind of fake because it does look like it's a film it version of a play or theater. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you know, I was okay with that. But the backgrounds that Justin mentioned, like in the Yuki Ona story the sky and they've got like eyeballs in the sky and shit that looked really cool yeah. or in the um hoichi story when he's telling the tale like the background is all like vibrant orange like sunset kind of thing mm -hmm. that was really really cool so i i actually really like those painted backgrounds 
how'd you how'd you feel about the sounds though I thought they were interesting. Sometimes I was kind of off with it. I didn't really like it. Sometimes I liked it quite a bit. I actually liked Hoichi's playing. I thought that was kind of cool playing the Biwa. And then I think it was in the Yoki or Yukiona story, I believe. There were some really cool, I don't know, strident string sounds that were sort of not the traditional Western horror strident mm. string sounds none of this was western <laughs> right, right but i mean it, it achieved the same kind of effect and sounded similar but it wasn't quite what i was used to hearing and that yeah. was i thought really cool i in particular i guess talking about hoichi like i was a really big fan of they actually took the time and i knew from the start what they were doing like the recitation of you know the battle between the Tyra clan and the Minamoto clan. Like, I thought, like, that was really cool. He might have recited, a, like, a couple passages more than I initially would have liked, but... You don't want to hear the whole thing? Well, it's apparently... We got spared because he literally says, he's like, yeah, there's actually, like, a hundred parts to it. And he's like, there's also, like, secret parts to it. Yeah, yeah. fucking, like, was, apocryphal verses and shit like, like that. I was like, yo... They got fucking OVAs and shit added in They there. do. Yo, they do, though. So, I liked, you know, that... And I guess... For a Japanese audience, particularly in the 60s, that might not have been something, you know, so out of the ordinary to them. Like, that might have been something they might have heard before. But for me... It would certainly be more familiar with these folk tales than we are. Well, yeah, exactly. But I mean, like, because I know that kind of singing is often, is also sometimes used in, like, traditional stage plays as well. Like, Mm -hmm. the narrator may do that type of voice as well to, like, explain what's happening or something else like that. But for me, like in America, it's cool to like see an authentic, like this is totally something that like that culture made. And so like, definitely agreed. It's not like a, Oh, watered down version of it. Or like someone did something like, no, this is literally what they've made. So it's cool to always see and gain a wider perspective um, of something like that. But Nika, do you have anything else you wanted to add in terms of the uh, the vox or the sound, bro? Um, one thing that I will add is just that the acting in all of these were pretty well done, I would say. Yeah. The performances given from the characters were all really passionate. They had a lot of dynamics in their delivery and how they gave their lines. And there wasn't ever really any monotony, I guess I could say. So it was engaging in that regard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I want to go ahead and get the ball rolling for real. So how do y'all feel about this as an offering of four stories as a compilation? How do you feel about that? It's fucking long, mate. It is long. It's 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 about three hours. It's fucking long. Yeah, it's about three hours. It's about three hours, give or take, which is roughly double the length off a movie we typically watch here on the podcast. Yeah. But yeah, it is long. I will agree with you. It is very long. Like, I feel in particular with the story of Hoichi that a lot of that, or some of that at least, could have been cut. And I think we wouldn't have really lost that much. I disagree with you on that, but I'll talk with you more about that when we talk about our favorite selections, if you will. I mean, fair enough. But, Dan, as a compilation, how do you feel about it? I liked it. I like the sort of different styles that each one had. I think I read somewhere that each story is supposed to represent a different season of the year. Oh, really? Which I haven't quite figured out in my head. I mean, obviously, the Yukiona is winter. I mean, that was okay, okay, obvious. okay. <laughs> yeah. But aside from that, I haven't really thought about piecing them, the others together. But I don't really know if that's true. Hoichi but... must be spring. It's got to be spring for Hoichi. I'll take your word on that. (laughs) But I think it's pretty cool, especially like the Hoichi story, how like probably almost half, if not half of it is told through singing and everything. That's Mm. very different than the other three. And I think each one sort of has its own distinct personality and characteristics to it, which I thought were pretty cool. But I do agree. It's long as fuck. And... I And I guess this is coming from an American perspective, but I would have liked them to kind of move a little bit quicker. 
I don't think I wanted any less of the stories. Like, I don't think I wanted like three stories or two stories or something because I feel like yeah. I did want four. But I think that if they kind of picked up the pace a little bit and maybe I'm okay with it being longer if it, this movie was like two hours and 15 minutes or something, I still feel like that's a long movie. But like splitting it to four, I think that would work a lot better. Because mm-hmm. like the pacing in some of these parts is just absolutely glacial yeah (laughs) yeah i'd have to agree also it is worth noting that they could have actually if they wanted to added more because this was taken from a book the book itself was called what is it it was actually called kawaii and stories and studies of strange things and it dropped in 1904 Mm. that was like an effort of like a folklorist makes sense and he basically just kind of like compiled all these different stories and shit like that. Kinda so like that's actually some really cool shit. Japanese uh, grim type deal. Yeah, thing. ostensibly, yeah. yes. Ostensibly very similar. Very, very, very similar. I'm going to have to check that out. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. So if they wanted to, they could have drawn more. They also could have drawn from different stories as well. So it's interesting that they put these up. But Dan, as you said, you know, one is for depicted for each season and it turns out i was dead ass wrong hoichi actually depicts summer hmm. that one's a pretty dead giveaway when you look up the story is it yeah 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 it actually says the story it's taken from is like something to do directly with summer oh, hmm. oh well, so it was right. like i was like oh well, fair enough that must be the summer one then but that's interesting now in terms of horror what kind of horror do we see here and i'm gonna say this i actually think this is literally folklore style horror in like the deepest way possible like a lot of these stories are tales of caution like the yuki ona is like a kind of like a cautionary tale to always you could keep subtitle your... yuki ona i fucked up <laughs> yeah like <laughs> literally like he should have just not said shit should have just not said shit and he'd have been fine had his you know hot wife he was forever so and ever. fine too he didn't yeah. have to oh my god how do you fuck that up honestly while I do agree with that, I feel like it's a little bit bullshit that the only person he told is the person herself. Yeah. So, like, come on. You can cut him a pass on that one. That's what I told Nico. I literally said, but he only Facts. told her, so come on. Yeah. Come on now. And to be fair, she prompted him. She's like, oh, what do you mean? Yeah. And that's when he continued. So I was See, like, I, I don't think know that's about a that. reasonable thing to say. Like, nah, are bro. you sure? Are you going to keep digging this hole you just set for yourself? I'd have lawyered her. I'd have been like, listen. listen. Okay, Gene. Listen, I'm just letting you know that what you did was wrong, okay? So you better chill. (laughs) Your Honor, chill. Damn. (laughs) (laughs) But no, honestly, come on. I'd be like, listen, you ain't want no one to know you was a Yuki Ona, but you said your name was Yuki? Okay. I believe you. He didn't fucking catch that. (laughs) My dude is not that bright. Nah, 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 not at all. But what did y'all think about the horror elements? Did you really dig the horror elements, or was this more like a different kind of story to you? I agree 100% with you. It's a folklore kind of horror ghost, traditional ghost stories. Warnings are, I mean, I think pretty much all of them were some sort of warning. Like, this isn't something that fits into our understanding of genre, really. This is something that, given the sort of one, anthology nature, and two, just the fact that this is derived from folklore, this feels like something that you would experience if you went to like or something that would be similar to like going out to a night at the opera or something i think Mm. would be a similar kind of experience to watching this in full having said that i don't think you should watch this in full unless you are really about that life because boy howdy well when you say in full i'm sure you mean in one sitting correct front front to back (laughs) yes i will admit even the movie tells you to take a break it's like intermission. So I will say I watch this one personally story by story. And after every story, I took a little break. Nico and I, we watched the first two together. And mm-hmm. then I watched the third and fourth by myself. But I took a little bit of a break in between the two because it's a lot to digest. It is if you sit and watch it all the way through. Now, Nico, you are someone who's kind of in line with writing and all that stuff like that. So I got to ask, is the last story some kind of meta commentary? Is it a joke? How do you interpret the last story? Because it literally ends with them saying, and there's this critical fight. Oh, we're not going to resolve it. It's up to your imagination, really. Yeah, I think they're fully trolling us there. 
Like yeah. I full ass think that is like, you know how there are some fairy tales that are just very whimsical and just like, don't give a fuck. Like going back to my example with the Grimm's, there is a fairy tale called the children who butchered each other. Guess what that one's fucking about. So like, it's not necessarily too off par here for it to be something that is a little bit more, I think, silly and messing with you a little bit. But having said that, I also think that it is something that, you know, takes you by surprise. And it's not like any kind of Shyamalan, ooh, what the twist type deal. But I thought it was fun. I thought it, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. That's fair. That's fair. Dan, did you take it the same way? Pretty much, yeah. And I kind of think, I mean, I know that there's some sort of connection because the author winds up in a bowl. Yeah. You know, in yeah. the water. So I guess his soul is trapped in there now or some shit. And that's some shit. <laughs> I don't know if that's trying to say that the author is the dude from the from the story he was writing or what. I you know, I don't quite know. But sometimes the curtains are just fucking blue. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it was that story kind of fell flat for me. I didn't really I didn't really like that one. I had a really weird interpretation of the last one. I viewed it as like a direct fuck you to authors who didn't want to finish their stories because I feel like that was the dude's punishment. Mm. I feel like that was the dude's punishment for making like such a shitty ending. It was literally just like, guess what? That could be. Now you're stuck in the jar of water or whatever that was. Because was George R. R. Martin of 1964. <laughs> You have to go older because this was taken from a book written in the 1900s. Fuck. Yeah, you're right. About like the olden times. So Shit. you have to go way further back. I mean, somebody who wrote that story had beef with someone else. There was like yeah, a right. story they wanted finished and it just was never finished because they were like, remember those stories about like old Edo or just like never done? What the fuck's up with that? And then they literally showed one and they're like, yeah, this guy who wrote that. Look what happened to him. Exactly. Fuck this Finish your particular. fucking stories. Finish your fucking stories. <laughs> so I was like, all right, that was weird. Fair enough, fair enough, fair I enough. I like that enough. interpretation, honestly. That's pretty funny. So I now want to ask you guys, we have four tales of terror, four stories of sensuality and secrets. Mm. Nope. Mm. Nope. Really. Each story either has sensuality or secrets. Now, let me have that one. I feel like they're not all that sensual, though. No. Or secrets. Or secrets. I feel like there's zero sensuality. You know what? In the Yukiona, he had two kids. There had to be some kind of sensuality going on. Nah, bro. You can have kids without being sensual. Yeah. I'm telling you, but they were in a loving relationship. So? We don't see that. I saw that. A little. No, you not sensually, bro. bro. Relax, know, you bro. Did you, some, you just see the look you, in her eyes when he made her those sandals, alternate bro? alternate research into this. Nah, bro. Some, some extras. You watch the secret versions of it? In the first story, he was like holding up his wife and like kissing her up and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for like that. 30 seconds. Right. But Out in like a hours. stage play like that, that's equivalent to like an hour. Okay, then this is like 100 hours long, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it secretly is. Do you know how many generations passed in this story? Nah. But, anyways, back on track after these guys tried to distract me. What's your favorite story out of the four? So we'll all say our favorite and then we'll say why we like it. So Dan, favorite. <sighs> sure, I'm so fucking torn. I'm going to say Yukiona. Oh, why is that one your favorite? So it plays like a very standard, like ghost story to me. Right. In a good right. way. Like I called like everything that's going to happen is a very classic kind of story, but I just mm -hmm. thought it was really cool. I really liked the, sky artwork that they drew yeah i thought that was really cool though i will say i'm gonna have to throw another one out there the hoichi story yes like when the shit gets good like when he gets his ears cut off and everything mm -hmm. that was my favorite little bit of the whole three hours but that wasn't enough to give that my favorite story because that one is just yeah. long and drawn out but so overall i'm gonna say yukiona okay nico where do you sit with all this what's your favorite my favorite was the last one just because I thought it was a little bit more playful. And honestly, I'm just grateful for the fact that it was a little bit more brief than the others. It allowed for the pacing to be a lot more upbeat and engaging. And that made it stand out for me. Okay. 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 From my perspective, my favorite joint 
was actually the Hoichi joint. And my favorite piece about that was, so at the start, when they're telling the story, I actually like knew bits and pieces of that story already. And all I know is, yo, when they were like, yo, it's Yoshitsune over there, I was like, oh shit, yo, Yoshitsune yeah. is about to fuck up like all your shit. Did you realize Yoshitsune and Dynasty Warriors? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nah, 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 Dynasty Warriors is feudal, is ancient uh, China. Yoshitsune is actually in Samurai Warriors. So oh, fuck y'all. Oh, my bad. Hey, yeah. hey, Kwai yeah. also has some um, Chinese stories in there too, so fuck you. Hey, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Not, not, fair not enough, the movie, enough. I don't think, but the book. The book, actual book, the book. But yeah, like, also, Yoshitsune didn't do shit in the, in, the, in the movie. Like, the one dude was like, Yoshitsune, I'm going to fuck you up. And then literally, like, the dude's guards just, like, jumped him instead. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. But I liked it because it was, like, an actual... I just love the pacing of it because the rest of this movie, to me, was so goddamn slow that, to me, yeah. Hoichi was, like, actually... It was also slow, but there were things happening. Like, every scene, something happened. Like, for me... I thought of it that way. Like, Hoichi's there. Some people talk about, like, we saw the whole, like, the beginning piece was the slowest piece. It took a little bit to get started because they had the whole fight between the Tyra clan and the Minamoto clan. But then afterwards, I liked it. It was pretty chill. It was pretty chill. So was there any story that particularly invoked your ire? Any story that you particularly didn't like? Yeah, the Hoichi one because I could feel my gray matter dying as I was watching it. Really? Wow. Dan? Not particularly. The first one, maybe, though I don't really feel all that strongly about it. It just didn't, like, do much for me. The one I liked the least was the first one as well. I kind of echo your thoughts. I thought, personally, that one was not the one to, like, set out to hook the viewer. Mm. I would have put Yukiona first, personally. Yeah. Just because I feel like that's a easier-to-digest story, and it, the pacing in that one is a little bit better, I think. But... All that to say, it's time for the what would you do. Now, I might be asking, how the hell, what kind of what would you do could we possibly do? Well, it's going to be a little bit simpler. If you had to put each of us, which of these four stories fits the three of us the best? So, for example, mm. Mm. which story fits Nico the best, Dan? I can see one of two, personally. I can see one of two. I, I feel like... Am I about to get my ears ripped off? Yes. <laughs> because Fuck. I feel like a spirit would just lead you away, or like Justin would just troll you, and he'd be the spirit leading you away, and then somebody would be like, <laughs> bro, Nico, you're being trolled, and you're like, oh, damn it. <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, I could see it just because, like, Nico would be chilling in, like, a temple one day, and there'd be, like, a ghost, like, are you trying to jam? I mean, sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's, you let's go fucking jam, throw right? down, bro. At my place. All of a sudden, like, we see you, like, jamming in a graveyard. We're like, oh, shit. We got to stop this. Got to put a cease to this. <laughs> now, keep in mind, Hoichi lost his errors, but he can still hear. Which, yeah. good yeah. on him. Good yeah. on yeah. him. All right. Now, let's go ahead and give the return retribution for Dan. Where's Which story is Dan in? Which one is he? I feel like of the three of us, Dan is the one who would be most likely to somehow end up in a blizzard out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so... I'm going to say Yukiona is where you fair end enough, up. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I feel like how Dan would end up like telling her, though, would be like he'd just be sitting there one day, and all of a sudden he'd just like turn around and be like, listen, just keep it real with me. Your name is Yuki. Are you the Yukiona or not? <laughs> and then like, yeah. she'd be like, how dare just you bring him that day? Just fucking level with me here. You look alike. Your name's the same. <laughs> He's like, listen, like this just doesn't make any sense. So... Does that make our kids half ghosts? Like, how does this work? <laughs> That's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, so w w what's going on with the kids? So <laughs> I have read. So, you know, obviously, like, there's the tale of the Yukiona, the snow women and whatnot. And then there's, like, bigger versions of those stories. And the one of them giant is. Giant women. <laughs> <laughs> one of them is that, you know, they lure men to their village to, like, sleep with them so they can get, like, pregnant and stuff like that and have kids. And then they'll, like, keep the daughters because the daughters become, like, snow women and they'll, like, get rid of the sons and, like, send Are them to a the village original or something like that. Bunnies? Jesus H. Christ. Well. No, he wasn't there for sure. Well, I'm saying, because, like, you know, like, Hiei from Yu Yu Hakusho, spoilers, like, is, like, the son of a Yukiona. So, there you go. 
Oh mm. shit! Yeah, he was. There you go. Because remember, Yukina, also with the the Yuki in her name, but like Yukina, she got the snow, not much else. So, <laughs> there you go on that one. Now, lastly, but leastly, me, poor old Justin over here. So you have to be the last one, bro. There's yeah. no other you option. You would troll the shit out of people like that, bro. You would definitely yeah. do that. Wait, are you putting me? I'm, I'm getting stuck in a, in a jar also, of water. You're getting stuck in a jar of water. The amount of unfinished songs you got, bro. Wow. Bro. <laughs> and it's like, and then Justin never did upload the song onto Distro Kid. Why? He preferred to only perform it live in a small venue where no one would hear. But <laughs> where is he? Help, I'm stuck. I'm stuck in the venue. And then you and just I get jumped by a fucking wig. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> now nah, my hair comes back to take revenge. Oh, you oh, want to no. shave me, huh? Yo, who would win? The fucking wig from this or the braid from um, fucking uh, sh- friendship. Oh, the, the friendship movie. Street. Street. Yeah. Street. Oh shit. Mm. I think oh, it no. would be the braid from Street, yo. That I thing. So. I have to give it to the thing from yeah. Street. Yeah. 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 Agree. Shout agreed, out to Street. Go check that one out too. Now we need like a contest, like Stree versus like the maiden with the black hair. We should go to them with this. Too fucking real. Ah, well, it's been fun. It's been an epic, you could say. But all good things must come to a close, and now I need your critical review thoughts. So where do you think this rates on Rotten Tomatoes? Where do you think this is sitting on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm going to say pretty low. I'm going to say a 42. A 42? Yeah. I'm gonna guess way the other side i feel like this if it's coming from something that's like a seminal work of japanese cult i'm gonna guess like culture not cults jesus christ i'm gonna guess like 83 as it is nico wins once again so this is sitting on rotten tomatoes with a 91 percent fresh from critics and a 90 percent from the audience as well so people thought very highly of this it's time to put your thoughts on the table. Why don't you go ahead and give me your general thoughts? And then, you know, where's your ranking at? Where's your ranking at? So who wants to go first? Who wants to take this foray into the darkness? I'll go. Overall, I I enjoyed it. I liked seeing the different sort of what I assume to be classic stories, ghost stories from, you know, different cultures. I think that's always really cool. I liked sort of the as we kind of said, like the play slash theater kind of enactment of it and the artwork and the skies. I just think it was a little too long. And, you know, I I know that Japanese culture is a lot more poetic than American culture is. And typically we just want things to move quick. Like I don't need like explosions and action all the time or whatever, but (laughs) I just thought it was a little too long and the pacing sometimes was a little too slow and, if this movie was two hours, 2.15, I think I would have liked it better. I'm going to give it a 70. Respectable. Ooh. So I'll go next. I really appreciate this movie, and I'm glad that I watched it. I feel that I have gained something from watching this that is much more substantial than other films that we've seen in here just because of how far removed it is from what we normally see and you know that's always a great thing to experience having said that even with the good parts of this of which there are a fair number of things that i did like this is just something that it just aches as it goes on and there are moments where it is absolutely brilliant like the end of Oichi's story, the struggle he has with the ghost is just honestly kind of a harrowing thing to watch. But all of that to say, you know, just pretty much what Dan said, I wish this was shorter. I'm going to give this a 64. I'm going to say a lot of things that you guys already said, but I personally like this movie. I like the backgrounds. I like a lot of the sounds in this. I like the acting. I I know it's kind of like a kiss from a bygone era, but you know, that was the time period where, you know, like especially in Japan, like 
all these actors are stage actors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. And you can tell. They've all been trained. Like you can yeah. very clearly tell. And it's, I mean, I remarked to Nico, like within 10 minutes of this, you know, movie, I was like, this is like a play mm -hmm. because it really, really, really is. And I like that. I really, really enjoy it. My criticism lies largely with the pacing. And I realize this is me speaking from a modern context and a Western one as well. But I do feel like not that I necessarily needed any of the stories to be shorter per se. In fact, personally, I feel like they could have dressed up the Yukiona story a little more. and That could have maybe stood on its own or even Hoichi that yeah. could have stood on its own as yeah. well. You know, like there's like two different routes to go. And like some of these are just like the decision to release them as a single compilation where you could have just cut it in half though. Right. Like yeah. it could have been like Kawhi and volume one and then Kawhi and volume two. And each one sure. could have been an hour and a half long. I mean, it's kind of like a joke that the last story is only 20 minutes long. Because if they'd all been just 20 minutes long, that would have been great. But the pacing just really, really, really confuses me. And again, maybe the intended audience were those audiences that were used to stage plays. So they were used to being in there for the long haul. And they were used to that level of like action or whatever. But I'm speaking from 2022. I can't speak from, you know... 1960s or whatever else like that so for me this is getting a 75 i liked it a lot it just the holy shit the pacing and i always talk about the pacing on a lot of movies we watch but this one in particular like really just like stabbed me like i had to force myself to get through parts of this yeah dan even remarked in our group chat was it when you just started the first one or had you started the third one hoichi story i was about halfway through a hoichi story oh okay yeah, so Dan Texas, I underestimated, I overestimated my ability to pay attention to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, like, you don't want to have that happen in a movie, but yeah, it is what it is. That's very true. But now it's time to put all the chips on the table. Would you recommend this movie to others? I'm not sure. Like, I'm glad that I watched this. I definitely gained a lot by watching this, but... I struggle to think that the average person would jam with this as much as we do. I want to recommend it. I don't know if they I do can. it, you coward. Yeah, to the average person, I'm going to say no, I don't. But I have a coworker that we talk about horror stuff all the time, and I'm going to recommend it to him. So the right person, right mindset, sure, but average viewer probably not yeah and you know what i am gonna take this and knock it up to a recommend because i i think that you should see stuff that exposes you to other cultures in a sort of i don't know that you would call this a vacuum but just like in a very authentic way just for the chance to experience those different things you wouldn't get to otherwise so actually despite all this yeah I'm, i am gonna recommend it i say yes but with one big caveat, you treat this like it was like American Horror Story or something else like that. And you watch each part as if it's like it's each individual episode. And seriously, watch it in chunks. Yeah, like watch it in chunks and your enjoyment will skyrocket. I enjoyed the last two way more than I enjoyed the first two because I didn't force myself to do it. Like even though I said I did, but like I really chunked it up and that made it so much better. So... That's how I would recommend you watch it. And if you do watch it like that, I can give you a recommend. But also, as we said, you know, like, get cultured, you scrubs. So, yeah. But all that to say, it's not getting the golden seal, though, is it? No. Uh, all right. Well, if you disagree with us and want to call us, you know, Western Pigs, feel free to do so. We're on Twitter and Instagram at DOTD Horror. We're also on Facebook. Don't open that door. Plus, you can catch everything we've done on our website. That's dotdhorror.com. But till then, keep yourself safe. Look out for one another. And as always, dear listener, don't open that door. Bye.